वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ प्रोडक्शन इन वन शॉर्ट सीरीज दैट इज कास्टिंग सो एज डिस्कस्ड प्रीवियसली इन दिस लेक्चर्स वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू कवर द एंटायर सिलेबस बट फॉर गेट 2023 थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री वट वी फेल्ट दैट इज इंपोर्टेंट विल बी कवर्ड विथ सम एग्जाम्पल्स so i am dr shodesh singh and these are my credentials i am gold medalist in btech from aligarh muslim university because i was university topper between 93 to 97 batch i am mtech from iit delhi and after mtech for one and a half year i worked for engineering services then after resigning again jo i joined iit delhi for my phd program and i am a researcher i do research in the area of material characterization and metal forming i think production and as per the scopus data published for year 2020 i am the world top 5% researcher and here at pw team trona it is not run by one single teacher we have champions of practically every subject so around 13 to 14 teachers we have expert in their subjects doesn't mean that one teacher will teach everything that is a mechanical that is not possible because i am a researcher i know very well that one cannot master everything if he claims it it means somewhere he is bluffing so we have a expert from each and every subject now let us start casting so first lecture was material science second was metallurgy third is metal forming one short series and this is your metal casting so metal casting suppose there's a mold cavity this is the cavity this mold cavity is created by a pattern this mold cavity is created by a pattern and whenever we say pattern we say it is a replica of part being produced but remember that it is not exact replica it is not exact replica because there will be some allowances that we are giving to the pattern so it's a replica but it is not a exact replica and with the help of a ladle and crucible we are pouring the liquid metal into the mold cavity at a temperature t t is the pouring temperature t is the pouring temperature and we are pouring the liquid metal into the mold cavity this pouring temperature should be optimum the pouring temperature should be optimum let us say t is the pouring temperature because some pouring temperature liquid metal has to come to the melting point liquid material material has to come to the melting point now phase change phase change means liquid at the melting point to liquid at to solid at the melting point so now phase change phase change meaning liquid at the melting point to 
solid at the melting point. There's a phase change. And then solid solid at melting point. From there, material has to come to room temperature. Material has to come to room temperature. So this is the journey. This is the journey of temperature of the casted product. Liquid at the pouring temperature, from there it goes to liquid at the melting point. Then there is a phase change and solid at melting point to the solid at the room temperature. So the material will be subjected to three stage of shrinkages. Material will be subjected to three stage of shrinkage. First stage is when material going from pouring temperature to the melting point, this is the first stage of shrinkage. Now, there will be shrinkage during the phase change. There will be shrinkage during the phase change. And third will be, third will be solid at the melting point to solid at the room temperature, there will be some shrinkage. Now, first two stage of shrinkages, first two stage of shrinkages has to be compensated by providing a riser. First two stage of shrinkages has to be compensated by providing a riser. So riser is a pool of reservoir. There are two functions of riser. Riser is a pool of reservoir. And during the first two stage of shrinkages, liquid metal will come from the riser. Liquid metal will come from the riser to the mold cavity to compensate the shrinkage. To compensate the shrinkage. So it's a pool of reservoir. So riser design should be such that riser should solidify after casting riser should solidify after casting so first two stage of shrinkages are compensated by providing a riser and third stage of shrinkage third stage of shrinkage is compensated by providing allowance on the pattern by providing allowance on the pattern. So patterns are made slightly bigger in size. So patterns are made slightly bigger in size to accommodate this allowance, to accommodate this allowance. So allowances over a pattern, allowances over a pattern. So, of course, uh, over a pattern, there are many allowances. There are many allowances on the pattern, but I will discuss two, three important ones. One is the shrinkage allowance. Shrinkage allowance. So, most metal. So which allowance is taken care by pattern? The third stage. Melting solid point, room temperature solid. So third stage of shrinkage is taken care by the allowance over the pattern. So most pattern upon cooling, they will shrink. 
now next two three minute it is a debatable point so i want all of you to pay a very careful attention next five minute you should pay a very careful attention in case of gray cast iron in case of gray cast iron see if you see material science percentage of carbon more than 2.4 percent are called gray cast iron more than 2.4 percent are called gray cast iron and in these gray cast irons in these gray cast irons because of presence of graphite there will be volume expansion see when the solidification is taking place when the solidification is taking place graphite is getting discharged from the material graphite is getting discharged from the material density of graphite density of graphite is less than cementite density of graphite is less than cementite density of graphite is less than cementite so what happens upon solidification the casting will expand there is a very beautiful book on casting there this formula is given percentage volume change is nothing but two times percentage of carbon minus 2.8 percent percentage of carbon or you can say graphite or you can say graphite minus 2.8 percent so technically if you see when my gray cast iron is having more than 0.2.8 percent carbon then casting will expand now in gate these questions appears so when the gray cast iron percentage is given so percentage of carbon more than 2.8 percent there will be expansion and when it is less than 2.8 percent there will be contraction so you know if the percentage is more than 2.8 percent you can say expansion and provide the negative allowances but unfortunately in gate exam the percentage was not given so you know what i recommend to all of you what i recommend to all of you that you solve the problem by contraction uh, contraction and if there is a when the problem will be solved by contraction when the percentage of carbon is not given to you and when in the gate key if there is a mismatch in the answer then you challenge so i think four or five years back this question appeared in gate and this proof whatever i'm uh, speaking to you now this proof with screenshots i have uploaded on my facebook page so that everybody can download these proofs i have taken from either the handbook handbook of casting or rosenthal rosenthal is a very good book on casting and handbook so from these two books i have taken the proof and put it over my facebook so that students can challenge uh, so anyway you have to be a little careful okay that's the reason i told you five minute all of you should be attentive
Now we are discussing allowances over a pattern. So first is the shrinkage allowance. So patterns are made slightly bigger in size so that after contraction product becomes actual size. So shrinkage allowance is the most important allow allowance that we give over the pattern. Now the second allowance is machining allowance. Machining allowance. In 70% cases, in 70% cases, our route is sand mold. Our route is the sand molding. And when the products are produced by sand molding, when the products are produced by sand molding, their surface finish will be very, very poor. Accuracy will be poor and the surface finish also will be very poor if you are producing the products, products by sand casting. So, what we do, we make the pattern little bigger than the product, so that after machining, product comes to actual size. After machining, product comes to actual size. Machining has to be performed for surface finish as well as accuracy. And the third point is draft allowance. Draft allowance. Draft allowance is over the pattern, we provide some taper. And this theta is approximately half to 2 degree <coughs> taper so that when we are removing the pattern from the sand mold, when we are removing the uh, uh, pattern from the sand mold, mold is not broken. Mold is not broken. So pattern, a draft allowance we provide over the pattern. Anyway, there are many, many allowances. In the full course, we will discuss all the allowances. But here, because it's a one-shot crash course, so we will discuss only the important ones. So now, first two allowances will be taken care by riser. And this is will be taken care by pattern. First two stages will be taken care by riser and the third stage will be taken care by a pattern. The pouring temperature should be optimum. The pouring temperature pouring temperature should be optimum. Pouring temperature should be optimum. <sighs> if the pouring temperature is low, if the pouring temperature is low, the viscosity of liquid metal will be low. Viscosity will be low. <laughs> Viscosity of the liquid metal will be low. This results in defects like cold shut or misrun. Cold shut or 
मिश्रण न पिक्चरलिकली इट इज लाइक दिस दिस इज द मोल्ड कैविटी एंड सम थिन सेक्शन इज अटैच टू इट एंड वेन द लिक्विड मेटल इज नॉट एबल टू फ्लो थ्रू दिन सेक्शन you are pouring from this side you are pouring from this side but the two streams are of liquid metal are not able to fuse <coughs> two streams of liquid metal are not able to fuse cold shot and mishran so all these type of defects will appear all these type of defects will appear when the pouring temperature is low <coughs> when the pouring temperature is high when the pouring temperature is high again it creates two problems again it creates two problems first problem is riser design will be very complicated riser design complicated you know bhai when the pouring temperature is high first stage of shrinkage will also be very high <coughs> when the pouring temperature is high first stage of shrinkage will also be very high see after 5 minute i am going to discuss riser design then you will come to know how complicated the riser design is <laughs> okay na so riser design biblical will become complicated because because first stage of shrinkage will be high because first stage of shrinkage will be high now second problem is if the pouring temperature is very high and let us say if it is a sand mold if it is a sand mold so when the high temperature metal high temperature metal comes in contact with the high temperature metal comes in contact with the moisture moisture it will be disintegrate into h2 and o2 it will be disintegrated into h2 and o2 high temperature h2o will be disintegrated into h2 and o2 so as the hydrogen gas is coming out as the hydrogen gas is coming out it leaves very fine holes it leaves very fine holes over the surface of the casted product over the surface of the casted product and this defect is called pinhole porosity pinhole porosity so very high temperature is a, temperature is a problem and very low a very low temperature is a problem so our pouring temperature should be optimum our pouring temperature should be optimum so these are the defects we will get it by not having optimum pouring temperature suppose ramming of sand suppose ramming of sand is also not proper ramming of sand is also not proper then <coughs> it produces three types of defects 
is a mold cavity and there will be riser riser if the ramming of sand is not proper so there will be hydrostatic pressure of liquid metal because riser also there will be volume na volume of liquid metal so whatever three defects i am going to discuss with you now whatever the three defects i am going to discuss with you now it is due to hydrostatic pressure hydrostatic pressure of the liquid metal so due to the hydrostatic pressure of the liquid metal metal displaces sand in the roof so my casted product will be like this um, it is called scab suppose ramming of sand is not proper in the wall so liquid metal will displace the sand here like this so my defect is like this it is called swell swell now suppose there are thin section attached to the castings suppose there are thin sections attached to the casting when these deformations are there in that thin section due to hydrostatic pressure if in the thin section the swell or scab appears that defect is called rat tail so rat tail defect appears due to hydrostatic pressure in the thin sections in the thin section so these are all defects due to hydrostatic pressure and these defects appears due to not having optimum pouring temperature not having optimum pouring temperature okay so now i am going to discuss riser design i am going to discuss riser design for any gate exam any any year riser design and gating system design riser design and the gating system design are always important whatever exam you appear riser design and the gating system design are very very important so what i request to all of you that approximately for 30 to 45 minutes approximately 30 to 45 minutes you should focus what i am teaching in the riser design after that i will discuss the gating system design riser design will consume approximately 30 to 45 minutes pay very careful attention it is a very very important topic pay very careful attention i will be <coughs> let it slow because if it is a live class based on the chat we have communicated very very effectively but it is going in the recorded mode so even if you have some doubt i think below this video there are links to join the telegram channels for there is a mechanical discussion telegram channel through that channel you can direct all your doubts to me through that channel you can direct all your all your doubts to me i will be i will be happy to answer all the doubts of your students there are three methods 
in the riser design very very carefully riser design and the gating system design are the most important topics of casting there are three methods of riser design first principle solidification time solidification time p is proportional to volume by surface area square this time this equation can be applied both for casting and for the riser this equation can be applied both for casting and for riser both for casting and for riser it is obviously understood v is the volume volume of the casting and what is the area <laughs> you have to be little careful a is the area area through which heat transfer is taking place <coughs> area through which the heat transfer is taking place there are two types of risers there are two types of riser one is called top riser and other is called side riser suppose this is the casting when the riser is at the top it is called top riser side riser is suppose this is the casting this is the riser this is called side riser in case of top riser in case of top riser see this surface riser surface and the casting surface are in contact riser surface and the casting surface are in contact so no heat transfer is taking place from the surface no heat transfer is taking place from the surface so this surface will not come in the calculation here because this is the area through which the heat transfer is taking place now very very carefully here if we are applying this formula for casting i will not take this area because the, this area also is very close to the hot point so no heat transfer will take place from this area so i will take this one this one this one all all four around and on the also from the bottom so if if you are using for casting this area we will not take and if this equation you are using for riser i will also not take this area but if it is a side riser if it is a side riser heat transfer is taking place from all the surfaces heat transfer is taking place from the all the side so entire surface area will be counted here entire surface area will be counted here entire surface area will be counted here okay na so apply this formula it's a first principle it is called first principle and get the solutions <laughs> okay so i will discuss one example here i will discuss one example
compare the solidification time for two optimum side risers one is cylindrical and other is a square parallel pipe one is cylindrical another is a square parallel pipe having same volume having same volume compare the solidification time for two optimum side risers one is cylindrical another is a square parallel pipe so i have already explained to you what is a side riser it's a mold and the riser is on the side so your one riser is cylindrical one riser is cylindrical r is the radius h is the height another is a square parallel pipe a square parallel pipe a by a is the bottom and height is h1 volume for cylindrical and volume for a square parallel pipe is same so pi r square h is nothing but a square h1 volume is same volume is same that's what it is given to you that's what it is given to you how we exactly calculate the optimum you know what is the meaning of optimum optimum riser will have optimum riser will have minimum surface area <coughs> optimum riser <laughs> will have minimum surface area optimum riser will have minimum surface area when the surface area is minimum heat transfer will be minimum when the surface area is minimum heat transfer will be minimum so now let us take case by case let us say cylindrical so volume is this surface area is 2 pi r square plus 2 pi r h because it's a side riser both the bottom and uh, top area both the bottom and top area heat transfer is taking place so both area will be counted here correct now the volume is constant so from here can i say h is equals to v by pi r square put it here so a is 2 pi r square plus 2 pi r volume by pi r square now for minimum surface area differentiate this with respect to r put it equals to 0 differentiate this with respect to r and put it is equals to 
let us see what you are getting so whenever there is some calculation i will give pause for 30 seconds or so of course you have facility to pause the video at any point of time because these are recorded classes Uh, in the live classes, it is not possible to pause, huh? but the recorded classes we can pause very, very easily. So optimum riser means minimum surface area, because when the surface area is minimum, heat transfer will be minimum, heat transfer will be minimum. So if you solve it, if you solve it, R will be V by 2 pi raised to power 1 by 3. R will be V by 2 pi raised to power 1 by 3. And this, you put in V is equal to pi R square H, put the value of R you will get h is equals to 2r. You will get h is equals to 2r. Okay? h is equals to 2r. Solidification time of cylindrical specimen, a cylindrical riser is equals to k volume by surface area of cylindrical square that's what it is so what is the volume of surface area volume is pi r square h surface area is 2 pi r square plus 2 pi r h h is equals to 2 r put it here volume surf by surface area of cylinder comes out to be r by 3 Volume by surface area of cylindrical riser is R by 3. Now, a square parallel of I. So, these are four sides. One top and one bottom. Same analysis I will do for a square parallel pipe. Same analysis I will do for a square parallel pipe. Volume is nothing but a square h. Surface area is 2a square plus 4ah1. Because a square parallel pipe height is h1. From here, h1 is equals to v by a square. Put it here. So, surface area is 2a square plus 4a volume by a square. Now, for optimum uh, riser, differentiate this a with respect to a, put it equals to 0. You can find out what is the side of a square parallel pipe. It is v raised to power 1 by 3. It is a v raised to power 1 by 3. You can check it if you want. Okay, you can check it if you want. So this A. Put the value here. So you will get h1 is equals to a. You check it. If you don't believe, you can check it. So same thing here. Volume by surface area of a square parallel pipe. This is the volume. h1 is equals to a. Put it here and here. So you will get a by 6.
a by 6. So now compare the solidification time of compare the solidification time of cylindrical riser over a square parallel of i. This constant will cancel out, correct? Huh? So <coughs> it's a volume by surface area cylinder square, volume by surface area square parallel of i, and these two values are here these two values are here r by 3 square a by 6 square so 4 r by a square that's what na 4 r by a square It is given in the problem. It is given in the problem that volumes are constant for both the risers. Volume is constant. Means for cylinder pi r square h is equals to a q h one. H is equals to 2 R. So, 2 pi R Q is equals to A Q. So, from here R by A is nothing but 1 by 2 pi raised to power 1 by 3. Put this R by A here. You will get T C by T S answer. And that is your answer. You will get T C by T S answer and it comes out to be 1.17. So, cylindrical riser solidification time is 17 percent more than the square parallel of i f. You know, for our riser, what is the better, best thing? more solidification time. For ideal conditions, riser solidification time should be more and the casting solidification time should be less. Ideal casting condition, riser solidification time should be more and the casting solidification time should be less for idealistic conditions. So, whatever analysis we have done, so, whatever analysis we have done, it is for side riser. It is for side riser. Suppose the same thing we do for top riser. Same thing we do for top riser. This is the mold. And this is the riser. So, bottom area of riser, bottom area of the riser through which there is no heat transfer, there is no heat transfer to the bottom surface. So, cylindrical volume is nothing but pi r square h and area is nothing but pi r square plus 2 pi r h. See, there is no 2 pi r square because bottom area we are not considering. Okay, na? So, from here h is equals to v by pi r square. So, area will be pi r square plus 2 pi r v by pi r square. 
सो फॉर ऑप्टिमम कंडीशन डिफरेंशिएट दिस एरिया विद रेस्पेक्ट टू आर पुट इट जुगस टू जीरो डिफरेंस दिस एरिया विद रेस्पेक्ट टू आर एन पुट इट जुगस इट्स अ सेम थिंग बट स्लाइड डिफरेंसेस ओके सेम थिंग विद द स्लाइड डिफरेंसेस इफ यू सॉल एच बिकम्स इक्वल टू आर एच बिकम्स इक्वल टू आर ओके ना फॉर साइड राइजर एच बाज इक्वल टू टू आर इफ यू डू दिस प्रोसीजर यू विल बी एबल टू नो इन द साइड राइजर एच बाज टू आर बट इन केस ऑफ टॉप राइजर एच बीच कस टू आर दिस आर ऑप्टिमम कंडीशन सो इन द एग्जामिनेशन व्हाट एवर ज्योमेट्री इज गिवन टू यू व्हाट एवर ज्योमेट्री इज गिवन टू यू विद इन नो टाइम you should be in a position to do all these calculations <coughs> let us say a square parallel pipe volume is nothing but a square h1 surface area is nothing but a square plus 4a square h1 so here A is nothing but a square plus 4a v by a square. A, a cancel out. Differentiate with respect to a. 2a minus 4v by a square. Correct, na? Put it equals to zero. So a q is nothing but 2v, and a is. 2v raised to power 1 by 3. Okay, na? So these optimum conditions will come for top riser. Once again, in a summary, in the first principle, there are three methods of riser design. First principle: t proportional to v by surface area square. this surface area a is the area through which the heat transfer is taking place a is the area through which the heat transfer is taking place and if you focus basically on this funda you will be in a position to hit you will be in a position to hit all the questions that is the first method second method is a modulus method second method is modulus method second method is a modulus method now what is the modulus method what is the modulus method solidification time is proportional to volume by surface area square so modulus method tells you volume by surface area of riser volume of surface area of riser should be greater than volume of surface area of casting <laughs> volume of surface area of riser should be more than the volume of surface area of casting because riser should solidify after casting riser should solidify after casting riser should solidify after casting otherwise there there is no use of riser so initially what you do i hope everybody is hearing very very carefully initially what you do the riser volume you take it as three times the volume shrinkage
in other words when the volumetric shrinkage is given to you when the volumetric shrinkage is given to you when the volumetric shrinkage is given to you it means you have to apply modulus method it means you have to apply modulus method after this volume of riser is three times the volumetric shrinkage you confirm with this expression you confirm with this expression whether it is correct or no okay na so here also i will take example one example here also i will take one example example determine the dimensions of a cylindrical riser both side and top riser i wanted you to do the calculation for both the side and the top riser to cast 20 by 20 by 20 cm cube 20 by 20 by 20 cm cube having volumetric shrinkage 9% having volumetric shrinkage of 9% volumetric shrinkage of 9% okay so as i told you when the volumetric shrinkages are given to you when the volumetric shrinkages are given to you you apply modulus method see how the calculations of uh, modulus method will flow let us take first of all the side riser we will do the calculations of side riser first volume of riser is nothing but 9% percent, 20 whole cube that many centimeter cube into 3 because volume of riser is 3 times the volume shrinkage and previously we have calculated the condition of what is the optimum condition for side riser what is the optimum condition of side riser h is equals to 2r are we have differentiated and the proved na <coughs> so what is the volume side riser 2 pi pi r square h is the volume of side riser h is equals to 2r so 2 pi r q is the volume of riser put this value here find out r find out the radius of radius of riser and it is coming out to be approximately 7 mm 7 cm because i have solved this questions when the volumetric shrinkage is given to you indirectly the examiner is telling you to apply the modulus method so if r is 7 h will be 14 cm okay <coughs> so what i told you after satisfying this you check this condition you check this condition because riser should solidify after casting riser should solidify after casting so volume by surface area of riser 
वॉल्यूम इज टू पाई आर क्यू सरफेस दिया बिकॉज इट्स अ साइड राइजर टू पाई आर स्क्वायर प्लस टू पाई आर एच यू नो एवरीथिंग यू नो आर यू नो एच यू कैन फाइंड आउट वॉल्यूम ऑफ सरफेस एरिया ऑफ राइजर even though it's a one shot recorded lecture you are seeing but still i recommend that you should keep pen and paper with you <sighs> so volume of surface area of riser is 2.33 वॉल्यूम बाई सरफेस एरिया ऑफ कास्टिंग बिकॉज इट्स अ क्यूब बिकॉज इट्स अ क्यूब एंड द साइड राइजर सो हीट ट्रांसफर विल टेक स्प्लेट फ्रॉम ऑल द सर्फेसेस सो सिक्स ए स्क्वेयर सिक्स इंटू ट्वेंटी बाई ट्वेंटी is a surface area volume is a q so volume by surface area of casting volume by surface area of casting comes out to be 3 by 3.33 3.33 volume of by surface area of casting comes out to be 3.33 now what is our conclusion volume by surface area of riser is 2.33 volume by surface area of casting is 3.33 so volume by surface area of riser is less than volume by surface area of casting exactly opposite to this um. so under these dimensions riser will solidify first under these conditions riser will solidify first if the riser solidify first if the riser solidify first there is no use of riser so riser should solidify at least after casting na so volume by surface area of riser should be greater than equal to volume by surface area of casting so volume by surface area of riser is nothing but r by 3 in the previous problem na first principle for side riser volume by surface area was r by 3 you can see the notes this these notes also will be provided to all of you should be greater than equal to 3.33 volume by surface area of casting is 3.33 correct na this one so r should be greater than equal to 9.99 so r let us say is equals to 10 for side riser for side riser H is equals to two R, so H will be twenty. So these are the dimensions of optimum side riser. So this is the answer we will be giving in the question. This is the answer we will be giving. The radius of the optimum side riser should be ten centimeter. and height of the optimum side riser should be 20 these are the answers we will be giving in answer sheet okay let us say if it is a top riser if it is a top riser if it is a top riser in case of top riser what we discussed H watch is equals to R. 
h bar is equals to r. So volume of riser, volume of riser we have already calculated. Na? This is the volume of riser should be equal to pi r square h. H is equals to r. From here you will calculate r. From here you will calculate r. It is 8.82 centimeter. Eight point eight two centimeter. <laughs> because I have done this calculation. Of course, if it is a live lecture, generally I give one or two minute break so that students are responding in the chat box. But one short lectures are going the recorded one only. Some of you hopefully we will meet in our full course. Okay, na? Then volume by surface area of riser volume by surface area of riser is 2.94. Now in the casting in the casting From the top surface, there is no heat transfer. <laughs> top surface, there is no heat transfer. So A will be 5 into 20 by 20. Volume, of course, will be same. <coughs> so volume by surface area of casting is nothing but 20 whole Q divided by A. So comes out to be 4. Check it once check it once whether it's okay <coughs> okay so here also here also volume by surface area of riser is less than volume by surface area of casting so riser will solidify prior to casting. Not a good design. Not a good design. So riser should solid solidify along with casting. Na? So r by 3 should be greater than or equal to 4. So r is equal to 12 centimeter. And r is equal to a h. These are the dimensions of top riser. <coughs> so whatever I have discussed till now, it is called modulus method. <coughs> it's called modulus method. In exam, when I will be using modulus method? In exam, when I will be using modulus method? when the amount of shrinkage is given to you when the amount of shrinkage is given to you okay now third method is keynes equation keynes equation keynes equation or you can say Keynes curve or Keynes curve by the way all of you should know that these are shrinkages are always expressed in the linear units shrinkages are always expressed in the linear units always expressed in the linear units Keynes equations are used. Keynes equations are used when the liquid metal undergoes extensive amount of shrinkage during the solidification. When the liquid metal goes extensive 
shrinkages extensive shrinkages during the solidification for example steel i am not going too deep into it because all of you are not in front of me if there is any problem you know there will be difficulty so specifically i am teaching whatever is most important for gate 2023 whatever is the most important for gate 2023 so if you cast steel this is the mold and this is the riser and if you cast steel you will get excessive shunter line shrinkage excessive shunter line shrinkage and you may not be able to use the casted part you may not be able to use the casted part so steels are very difficult to cast materials steels are very difficult to cast materials this steels can be casted by two methods steels can be casted by two methods let us say this is the mold this is the riser after filling the riser you put some insulation material at the top insulating material at the top <laughs> insulating material at the top so from the top heat transfer will decrease <coughs> from the top heat transfer will decrease this will decrease the center line shrinkage so steels can be casted by using the exothermic uh, some insulating material steels are best casted with the help of exothermic material exothermic material after filling the mold cavity you put some exothermic material at the top of the riser some of the important exothermic material are thermit thermit mixture <coughs> the same material that we are using in for welding of railway tracks <coughs> welding of railway tracks so after some time the exothermic reaction starts and the riser material will again liquefy and the riser material will again liquefy so you will get a perfect cast you will get a perfect cast by using the exothermic material so steels or the materials that shows excessive shrinkage are very difficult to cast <coughs> either we have to use some exothermic material or some insulating material and their riser design should be done by using keynes equation their riser design should be done using keynes equation now there is something called keynes curve <coughs> in the keynes curve x parameter is volume by surface area of riser volume by surface area of casting this is the x parameter and the y parameter is volume of riser 
to the volume of casting and the curve is a rectangular hyperbola i hope everybody is hearing properly <coughs> so riser dimension should be such riser dimension should be such that we are on this side we will get good casting on this side it will be um, defective castings it will be defective castings okay this is the first form of kane's curve <coughs> suppose my uh, product is a rectangular bar l w p so here it is a vr by vc there is no change here and x axis becomes shape factor it is l plus w divided by t uh, l plus w divided by t and the shape is also rectangular hyperbola these products will be good and on this side riser design should be such that we are on this side and here the products will be bad or you can say defective <coughs> the equation of this kane's curve is the equation of this kane's curve is x is equals to a divided by y minus b plus c if it is a shape factor x is this y is this normally this is x and this is y a b and c are called kane's constant a b c are called kane's constant a b c are called kane's constant generally if it is a live class or let us say offline class whenever i'm teaching these things students ask a very beautiful question are sir it's a rectangular bar we can easy, easily take shape factor like this but if it is not a rectangular bar like in the gate this question appeared na it's a hollow cylinder it's a hollow cylinder there is no problem in length length will be as it is but how we will calculate w and t how we will calculate w and t this is the t there is no problem how to calculate w for that we will calculate mean diameter we will calculate the mean diameter and equivalent w is the perimeter of this diameter w here shape factor will be perimeter of this diameter these discussions appeared in gate so if it is not a cr rectangular cross section it's not a rectangular cross section we calculate the equivalent width we calculate the equivalent width in other words uh, you know if you summarize everything when the kane's constants are given to you you have to use a kane curve if the volumetric shrinkage is given to you you have to use modulus method and when there is no such information is given to you use the first principle t proportional to volume by surface area square 
just go ahead with that solution that is the way we will go <laughs> that is the way we will go <laughs> okay all right so that was the discussion on gating system see in the regular class we will discuss too much into detail and we will solve many many problems but in one shot we have to be precise we have to be very precise in one shot <coughs> now gating system gating system <coughs> gating system if you see any standard book of casting there are different types of gates top gate bottom gate tangent gate falana dekana but for our gate exam two gates are important this is the mold cavity when the liquid material is poured from the top it is it is called top gate liquid material is poured from the top it is called top gate but when the liquid material is poured from the bottom it is called bottom gate it is called bottom gate this is called pouring basin this is called sprue and <coughs> at the bottom we use a ceramic splash core we use a ceramic splash core and this is the horizontal runner this is called horizontal runner horizontal runner in the top gating system there is one advantage and then there is a disadvantage in the top gating system feeding time will be less top gating system feeding time will be less for a good gating system for a good gating system feeding time to should be less you know why if you see the phase diagram of most of the material let us say copper nickel there is a meshy zone there is a meshy zone so when the ma liquid material is cooled so material is getting solidified in this range so when the solidification time is more there will be dendritic growth dendritic growth and dendritic growth leads to voids in the casted part anyway because you know i told you na we are it's a short course <laughs> so uh, solidification time should be less solidification time should be less 
so in the top gating system solidification time is less so you feel that we will prefer top gating system no the basic problem in the top gating system is the basic problem in the top gating system is there will be turbulence there will be turbulence of liquid metal in the top gating system just like a roof we are opening the tap liquid metal is falling from the roof so in the top gating system there will be turbulence in the top gating system there will be turbulence due to this turbulence due to this turbulence sand will be eroded because by the uh, most of the cases it is a sand mold na due to this turbulence sand will be eroded and the sand after mixing with the liquid metal produces phthalate fesio3 produces phthalate fesio3 and fesio3 is a compound very hard material so you do to turbulence you know what will happen millions of micro phthalate pockets millions of micro phthalate pockets will be inside the casted part will be inside the casted part phthalates are very hard so during machining so when we are machining the workpiece casted part when we are machining the casted part when the phthalate pocket comes in contact with the cutting edge when the phthalate pocket comes in contact with the cutting edge cutting edge will experience a shock cutting edge will experience a shock and a portion of cutting edge will break it leads to tool wear it is one of the mechanism of tool wear so phthalate production will be very high in case of top gating system so for top gating system one advantage and, and one disadvantage advantage is that the fe feeding time will be less so dendritic growth possibilities are very less negative thing is it leads to turbulence and that leads to production of phthalate top gating system now bottom gating system feeding time will be more feeding time will be more so dendritic growth may happen but because we are feeding uh, through bottom so level rise level of liquid metal will rise in the mold cavity from the bottom to top so turbulence will not be there so phthalate possibility will be very less in the bottom gating system very less in the bottom gating system why we use pouring basin to arrest turbulence to arrest turbulence bottom gating system we use to arrest turbulence my sprue is a tapered i will tell you why my sprue should be tapered i will tell you in 2 minutes why my sprue should be tapered and at the bottom of sprue i provide ceramic splash core the reason is the reason is when the liquid metal is hitting the bottom part again it may erode the sand again it may erode the sand so what we do we keep the ceramic splash core at the bottom this horizontal runner will have a diverging cross section will have a diverging cross section why i will tell you so for gate exam exam we teach only the two types of gating system top gating system and the bottom gating system other gating system generally we don't teach little bit introduction we give we give in the full course now i told you that why we make sprue it will taper 
वाई वी मेक स्प्रू लिटिल टेपर मोल्ड पोरिंग बेसन इस प्रू नॉर्मन क्लेचर आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू बिफोर सो दैट इज द रीजन आई एम नॉट गोइंग थ्रू लेट अस से दिस पॉइंट इज वन दिस पॉइंट इज टू and this point is 3 h1 h2 h1 h2 and h3 total height it is called h1 plus h2 and by the way ht is also called manometric height manometric height ht is also called uh, manometric height okay what i am discussing why what should be the shape of this taper okay whatever calculations we did in the riser design it is very very important for gate and whatever calculations i am doing for this gating system that is also very very important because it's a one shot crash course we will not be able to discuss many many problems but next 15 minute if you are careful next 15 minutes if you are careful i am 100% sure that you will be able to hit every single problem of gate next 15 minute if you are careful based on my 23 years of teaching students you will be able to hit every single problem of gate ready <laughs> uh, we are discussing top gating system also only let us go to the fluid mechanics little bit bernoulli equation Bernoulli equation means p by rho g plus v square by 2 g plus h is equals to constant. H is nothing but z, na? Is equals to constant. I will go a little slow because I because some students are really bright, very very bright, but some students are little less than average. So I am I have designed these things. for everyone including those those who are below average okay na because it is uh, you know private colleges they don't teach anything so those students are totally blank and we have to benefit them also apply bernoulli equation between 1 and 3 apply bernoulli equation between 1 and 3 what my continuity equation says A1 V1 is equals to A2 V2, correct, na? That is a, a continuity equation. So at point one, it is a it is open to it's a reservoir, open to atmosphere. So if we apply P1 by rho g plus V1 square by 2 g is equals to P2 by rho g. Plus H T is equals to P two by rho G plus V two square by two G. 
because h t is the manometric height between point 0.1 and 3 height. h t is also called a man manometric height. Okay, now this is the we ha I have applied Bernoulli equation between 1 and 3 because point 0.1 is open to atmosphere. So, gauge atmospheric pressure will be 0. I am boiling down this equation to gauge pressure now. And the cross section area of the reservoir is quite high. So, with respect to V2, V1 will be very small. V1 will be very small, correct? Huh? And now it is a top gate. Point 3 is also exposed to atmosphere. Point 3 is also exposed to atmosphere. So, this is also 0. P3 by rho g plus V3 square by 2g. So, this gauge pressure will be 0 because this point is a top gating system. This point is also exposed to atmosphere. So, what is my conclusion? V3 is square by 2g is nothing but ht. So, V3 is nothing but under root 2g ht. I hope this is okay with everyone. <coughs> I hope this is okay with everyone. I will go a little slow so that all of you can handle this properly. Okay. Now apply Bernoulli equation between 2 and 3. Apply Bernoulli equation between 2 and 3. Initially, I am assuming. Initially, I am assuming that the cross section area is uniform. I am assuming that the cross section area is uniform. I am assuming that the cross section area is uniform. So, P2 by rho g plus H2 is equal to P3 by rho g uh, cross section area is uniform. If the cross section area is uniform, If the cross section area is uniform, velocity will be same. Velocity will be same. Correct, na? So cancel out. P3 P3 is open to atmosphere. So this gauge pressure will be zero. This gauge pressure will be zero. Correct, na? So what is my conclusion? <laughs> My conclusion is P2 by rho g is minus H2. Negative gauge pressure means a vacuum. Vacuum. So at this point, vacuum will develop. At this point, vacuum will develop. And as I told you in the beginning of the casting one shot, I am purposefully little slow because I want everyone that this point should go to your mind. It is a very, very important discussion. It is a very, very important discussion I am telling you. Everything should get into your mind. Everything. And I am 100% sure that you will be able to hit every single problem of gate if you understand this one.
I told you that 70% cases it is a sand mold. 70% cases it is a sand mold. It is a sand mold. And if the vacuum uh, develops somewhere in the gating system, it's a sand mold. This is the sprue. And let us say here there is a vacuum. Uh, um. Opposite of permeability will happen. Opposite of permeability will happen. <coughs> what is the permeability? When we are pouring the liquid metal into the mold cavity, <coughs> when we are pouring the liquid metal into the mold cavity, due to metal mold reaction, gases will produce. And through the sand voids, <coughs> through the sand voids, these gases go to the atmosphere. Through the sand wires, these gases goes to the atmosphere. But now, due to our design, if the vacuum develops, opposite of permeability will happen. So the gases will from the atmosphere will come to th through the sand voids and mixes with the liquid metal. <laughs> opposite of permeability will happen. That. <coughs> Atmosphere, because vacuum is inside, outside pressure is atmospheric. Through the sand voids, the uh, atmospheric gases will come and mixes with the liquid metal. And once the atmospheric gases liquids uh, mixes with the liquid metal, there will be blowholes or cavities inside the casted part. In other words, it will be a defective casting. It will be a defective casting. So anywhere in the gating system, anywhere in the gating system, vacuum should not develop. Anywhere in the gating system, vacuum should not develop. <laughs> okay, na? So I will make only this portion. Only this portion, I will make it. So, one idea came to my mind. Let us have tapering. Let us have tapering. Point two. Point three. And now that uh, I, I hope everybody is hearing very, very carefully, not getting distracted from the family th issues because you are watching this at your home. Decrease in cross section area should be such here the area is A2 and here the area is A3. Decrease in area should be such that my pressure is constant P2 by rho g plus V2 square by 2G plus H2 is equals to P3 by rho G plus V3 square by 2G. So uh, my design should be such that pressure is constant throughout. Pressure is constant throughout. And continuity equation is A2 V2 is equals to A3 V3. A2 V2 is equals to a3 B3. I hope everybody is okay. A3 by A2 into V3. And let us say this is R. R is A3 by A2. Area ratio. R is the area ratio. R is the area ratio. Okay, na? Put it here. So R is square, V3 is square by 2G plus H2 
this I have put it here. This is my continuity equation, na? So I have put it there. <sighs> Bring on this side. No, no, it's H two on this side. Bring this factor on this side. So H two is nothing but one minus R square V three square by two G. V3 square by 2G. So step by step, if we follow, things are very easy. Step by step, if we follow, things are extremely easy. Uh, V3 square by 2G. is HT. So H2 by HT is equals to 1 minus R square. Can I do that? Now, put let us shuffle a little bit. R square 1 minus H2 by HT h t minus h 2 is h 1. So, r is equals to under root h 1 by h t. This is your area ratio. So, this is your area ratio. So, when the now conclusion is very very important all the gating system calculation you have to be very very careful. So, when area is decreased in this ratio linearly area is decreased in this ratio linearly pressure will be uniform throughout and aspiration effect can be avoided when this atmospheric air is getting into the liquid metal this phenomena is called aspiration effect so the a sprue should be tapered to avoid the aspiration effect. A sprue should be tapered to avoid the aspiration effect. But see, actually, it will be a little curve. This is actual. This is theoretical. Actual will be little parabola and little more decrease in area. Why it is so? Actual will be little more decrease in area with slight curve. You know why it is so? Because as the liquid, I hope everybody is hearing properly. Because if it is a live chat, it would have been different mechanism, but unfortunately it is a recorded one. But I am 100% sure that we will meet sometime. Okay, no? So why there is a curve? As the liquid metal is flowing in the channel, as the liquid metal is flowing in the channel, there will be drag. there will be drag and the drag will also eat up drag will also eat up a portion of pressure <laughs> drag will also eat up a portion of pressure so again vacuum may develop so to accommodate the drag the area is further decreased so actual will be slightly curved and slightly more decrease in area. So that is the reason sprues are tapered. That is the reason sprues are tapered. <laughs> I hope everyone is okay. I hope everyone is okay.
in this gating system i told you this runner will have a diverging cross section y the runner will have a diverging cross section y so now let us look at here now we are discussing the runner we are discussing the runner let us say this is the runner and here is a mold cavity and here is a sprue just when there is a runner is starting there will be compensation for vena contractor this is compensation for vena contractor compensation means this, this will also be sent raised portion compensation for vena contractor if you do not provide compensation for vena contractor you know what will happen A streamline flow it is like this here there will be turbulence here there will be turbulence and if there is a turbulence again the sand will be eroded again the sand will be eroded and there will be formation of halite so when the liquid metal just entering into the horizontal runner, runner there will be compensation for vena contracta uh. there will be compensation for vena contract and just at the entry to the mold just at the entry to the mold there is a skim bob you know a digital world i i don't know many things basically understand <laughs> skimba so when the liquid metal is flowing so what this skimba does heavier impurities will settle down and the lighter impurities will flow lighter impurities are also called dross primarily the foam kind of thing that appears now you must be seeing in the foundry practices the foam that is there on the surface of liquid metal dross so what is the purpose of uh, iskimba <coughs> lighter impurities float heavier impurities settle down and almost a pure material almost a pure material enters into the mold cavity so last filtration is done by skim bob last filtration is done by skim bob <laughs> i hope everybody is okay now from here you find many questions in gate let us say this point is 4 this point is 5 okay <coughs> there are two types of feeding system gravity feed system and the pressure feed system <coughs> gravity feed system and the pressure feed system so pre gravity feed system means i am pouring the liquid metal under gravity into the pouring basin but suppose if it is a pressure feed system for example injection molding just like injection na i am with the help of piston cylinder i am pressurizing the liquid metal i am injecting into the liquid into the mold cavity 
when i am injecting the liquid metal into the mold cavity under pressure it is called pressure feed system but when with the help of ladle and crucible if you are pouring the liquid metal into the pouring basin under gravity it is called a gravity feed system now let us discuss the gravity feed system first if you apply the bernoulli equation between point 4 and 5 p4 by rho g plus v4 square by 2g because it is on the same plane because it is on the same plane so h1 is equals to h2 <coughs> is equals to p5 by rho g plus v5 square by 2g okay that's what it is <laughs> that's what it is here there will be some friction losses okay na some losses will be there some losses will be there friction losses primarily because of drag there will be friction losses by sprue tapered sprue this uh, this pressure is atmospheric pressure <coughs> this pressure is atmospheric pressure and if the cross section area is uniform we will cancel out we will cancel out <coughs> this is the atmospheric pressure so you know what is the conclusion p5 by rho g is minus it's a vacuum again here <laughs> Again, there is a vacuum here. If vacuum happens here, again the atmospheric gases will percolate down and produces blowholes and gas holes. Vacuum should not appear anywhere in the gating system. So what we do, we put a diverging area. Diverging area so what happens as the liquid metal is moving in the forward direction as the liquid metal is moving in the forward direction velocity is decreasing velocity is decreasing <coughs> and the velocity is converting into pressure pressure is increasing this increased pressure is sufficient to take care of the losses increased pressure is sufficient to take care of the losses so in the gravity feed system in the gravity feed system horizontal runner will have a diverging area gravity feed system horizontal runner will have a diverging area again okay, so it was a very very important concept i hope everybody studied it properly let us say cross section area a1 a2 a3 understood what is a1 a2 a3 understood what is a1 a2 a3 this a1 is to a2 is to a3 is called gating ratio a1 is to a2 is to a3 is called gating ratio a1 is basically the sprue base area. A2 is the entry to the horizontal runner. And A3 is the cross section area through which the liquid metal entering into the mold cavity. It is called gating ratio. And for gravity feed system, it is for 
gravity feed system it is 1 is to 2 is to 3 1 is to 2 is to 3 or 1 is to 2 is to 4 or sometime 1 is to 2 is to 2 when the viscosity is very high so you know the area is increasing in the forward direction na? area increasing area is increasing in the forward direction as i told you that the pressure should be uniform throughout so area is increasing in the forward direction This data uh, is being asked a lot in Kate. There's a reason I'm roaming around the same point repeatedly. <coughs> <coughs> Gravity feed system area should increase. A1 is a sprue base, A2 is entry to the horizontal runner, and A3 is the entry to the casting. But if it is a pressure feed system, but if it is a pressure feed system, it will be 1 is 2.75, 0 0.75 is 2.5, or sometimes we say 2 is 2, 1 is 2, 1. Because the pressure is already very high pressure is already very high so there is no question of aspiration effect pressure is already very high so there is no question of aspiration effect because in the channel pressure is already above pressure is already above the, above the atmospheric pressure so now what we want we want to fill the mold cavity quickly we want to have more velocity of liquid matter so we keep on decreasing the area so generally question is asked in gate in this way among the following option, gravity feed system will have getting ratio A, B, C, D. You have to identify which option is increasing cross section area. Question can be among the following option, which is the pressure feed system? Pressure feed system cross section area should decrease because in decreasing cross section area, velocity of liquid metal will be more. Okay, so it was very very important for gate. Gate it was very important. It was very very important for gate. Okay. Now I want to discuss a little bit upon the feeding time. Feeding time. feeding time how much will be the feeding time in the top gating system and the bottom gating system once again I want all of you because this casting lecture is very packed <laughs> I want because at maybe three hours if you see this lecture properly 90% questions of most of the examinations you will be able to hit. 90% you will be able to hit. It's, it's a pact. Let us say if it is a top gate. Let us say if it is a top gate. Once again, I will be little slow here because I want that this discussion should percolate to your heart it's a mold h is the height of mold and a is the cross section area is the cross section area i am not making the complete geometry of gate now <coughs> let us say ag is the area area of gate and vg is the under row 2 GHT 
VG is the velocity with which liquid mantle is entering into the mold cavity and AG is the cross section area. Let us say TF1 is time to fill mold. TF1 is the time to fill the mold. So this calculation is very very simple. This calculation is very very simple. Generally, whenever we say TF1, it's a top gate. TF2 is the bottom gate. TF2 is the bottom gate. <coughs> so in the TF1 time, in TF1 time, amount of how much is the volume of liquid metal coming out of the gate? In TF1 time, how much is the volume of liquid metal coming out of the gate? AG VG into TF1 come or AG under root 2G HT into TF1. It is the volume of metal coming out through the top gate. It should be equal to volume of casting. Volume of casting that is A into H. So AG under root 2G HT TF1 will be equal to A into H. So TF1 is nothing but A into H divided by AG under root 2G HT. This is the time to fill the mold cavity using the top gating system. Time to fill the mold cavity using the top gating system. Time to fill the mold cavity using the top gating system. If you focus on the derivation, most of the problems will be hit. Now, maybe this after one shot lecture, you see P by Q. It will be very, very easy. Of course, because <coughs> one shot lecture, we have limitations of work dot problems. We are not discussing too many problems because we have to cover the most important topics in a very short time. But you do P by Q yourself. You will come to know that it is very, very easy. But if, you, if these proofs are in your mind, if all these proofs are in your mind, P by Q is very, very easy because mostly you can say 80% P by Q are based on either gating system or the riser design. Now, how much will be the solidification time for bottom gating system? How much bottom gating system? For the bottom, bottom gating system? This is your mold. And this is the runner. OK? I'm calculating now how much time is consumed in filling the same mold cavity A and H using the bottom gate. AG is the gate, er gate area, VG is the velocity with which, VG is the velocity with which liquid metal is entering, liquid metal is entering into the mold cavity. Let us say this point is 1, this point is 2,
I know because most of you, 95% of you will be from private colleges. And we don't learn much in private college. So I, that's the reason I'm focusing all of you to be attentive in the next five minutes. To be attentive in the next five minutes because I, I, live chat is not running in front of me. That is the reason I'm telling you to be attentive in for next five minutes. In DT time, in DT time, amount of liquid metal coming out of this gate in DT time, amount of liquid metal coming out through this gate in DT time amount of liquid metal coming out through this gate increases the level in the mold by dh okay dt time how much amount of liquid metal comes out that is sufficient to increase the level by dh so equate the volume ag vg dt should be equal to A into DH. Equate the volume. Equate the volume. Is that okay? Correct? Correct? Now, point number one is above the pouring basin. Point number two is exactly at the gate. And point number three is at the surface. See, at the top there will be riser, na? Somewhere there will be riser. So three point is at the surface. Okay. So here the pressure will be atmospheric pressure. Um. Pressure will be atmospheric pressure. Now, do one thing. I am slow <laughs> because I want for everyone this point should percolate down. Apply Bernoulli equation between 1 and 2. P1 by rho g plus let us say ht. ht is the same thing that we discussed before. Manometric height, we, we discussed before manometric height plus ht will be equal to P2 by rho g plus V2 square by 2g. See, because on the right hand side of the P2, there is a liquid metal. Right hand side of P2, there is a liquid metal. So, pressure here will be more than the atmospheric pressure. So, P2 is not atmospheric, it is more than atmospheric pressure. Because point number 1 is above the pouring basin, so these two points I can neglect. So, HT is nothing but P2 by rho g plus V2 square by 2g, let us say equation number 2. Equation number 2. I hope everyone is okay. I hope everyone is okay. All right. <laughs> P2 is the pressure here. Now, all along this plane, because it's almost bottom, na? let us say this point is 2 dash. All along this plane, pressure will be uniform. P2 will be equal to P2 dash because it is on the same level. Because it is on the same level, correct? Na?
So apply Bernoulli equation between two dash and three. Apply Bernoulli equation between two dash and three. So p two dash by rho g plus v two dash square by two g is equal to p three by rho g plus v three square by two g plus h. H is that instantaneous height. H is that instantaneous height because two dash is almost bottom because gate only, na? Correct, na? Now let us say casting is cylindrical or cross section area doesn't change, so this will cancel out. P three is atmospheric, so pressure is zero. P two dash P two dash is equal to P two, so P two we can put P two here. So P two by rho g is equal to h. Is that okay with everyone? Easy, na? It's a easy. Okay. Put this here. So can I say H T minus H is equal to V two square by two G. V two is nothing but under root two g h t minus h. V two is under root two g h t minus h because V two is V g only, na? V two is V g only. Put this V two here. This is V two only. Put this V two here. Um. So A G under root two G H two minus H. A G B is D T. Is equal to A D H. Is equal to A D H. Okay, so put every this factor, all these factor here. So d t is nothing but a d h divided by a g under root two g h two minus h. Correct. I want to find out the total time. So zero to t f two. T f two is total filling time. Filling time of mold cavity. Filling time of mold cavity. So this has to be integrated from zero to h because h how how it is moving from zero to h time zero to t. So we can integrate this. We we can integrate this. So after integration, after integration, two a, a g two g. Minus under root h t minus h. This will be the time to fill the mold. This is the time to fill the mold using the bottom gating system. This is the time to fill the mold using the bottom gating system. I have a suggestion to all of you. Point number one. I don't believe in mugging. I do not believe in mugging. 
so what the procedure which i have done na you use the procedure if you do this procedure two three times you will become champion so do this procedure in gate to find out the answer because if you mug it up and sometimes goes here and there there will be problem for you that is point number 1 point number 2 is here i have taken that the cross section area is uniform of the mold <coughs> but suppose the cross section area is variable then you don't have any other option except to go by the first procedure the way we have done it <laughs> is that okay with everybody those who are watching this video for everyone i want to go through this procedures so let us see the questions of the gating system design <coughs> as i told you for gate riser design and the gating system designs are two most important topics and whatever derivation that just now i have done you should do it at least two times without looking to your notes if the derivation is clear you will not have problem in hitting any question of gate that is my promise <coughs> so this is the first question a casting of size 100 by 100 by 25 so 100 by 100 is this area and 25 is the height <coughs> is filled by the top and bottom gates with the manometric height of 25 so the manometric height is same okay same 25 cm compare the time to fill using the both gates means top gate and the bottom gate this is the bottom gate <coughs> and that will be the top gate and ag is 5 cm square yeah here a top gate ac yeah, ag is also 5 cm square so we have uh, done this formula we have proved na this is the bottom gating system and this is the top gating system so first of all top gating system tf1 is a into h divided by ag under root 2g ht so that's what we have derived just now area 100 into 100 means 10 raised to power 4 cm square 10 raised to power 4 into height is 25 gate area is 5 cm square under root 2g ht is 25 g is 981 centimeter per second square 9.81 meters per second square no? so we have converted into centimeter per second square so here if you saw all <coughs> if you saw all answer will come out to be 225.7 second top gating system <coughs> this is the top gating system now this is the bottom gating system so what is the formula that we have derived twice a 
अंडर रूट टू जी एच टी इन टू ए जी अंडर रूट एच टी माइनस अंडर रूट एच माइनस एच टी दैट्स वॉट वी हैव ड्राइव ओके now you know everything put the values here let us see what you get you will get 451.5 this is the time to fill the mold using the bottom gating system <coughs> see one conclusion you have already drawn before one conclusion you have already drawn before t2 will be greater than t1 it will always be greater than t1 time to fill the mold cavity by using the bottom gating system will always be more than the top gating system <coughs> but here there is a one more important conclusion if manometric height this manometric height is equal to the height of height that you want to fill if manometric height is equal to the height that you want to fill then tf2 is a twice tf1 tf2 is twice to tf1 it's a very very important conclusion <coughs> it's a very very important conclusion so you know if you are pakka in the derivation these questions are extremely easy these questions are extremely easy look at this question look at this question first of all digest it Read the question first. <sighs> Purposefully, I am giving thirty second or one minute break so that you can digest. This is the mold cavity. Thirty by thirty is the bottom area. Height is thirty mm. Gate area is five centimeter square. and over the <coughs> mold cavity there is a riser riser is a 15 mm centimeter height and the diameter of riser is 20 mm and uh, this is the manometry okay 35 mm now my question is what is the time to fill the entire cavity what is the total time to fill the entire cavity this entire cavity includes the mold and the riser entire cavity includes the mold and the riser this mold can be further divided into two this is section 1 and the section 1 will be filled like a top gating system section 1 will be filled like a top gating system this is section 2 and the section 2 will be filled like a bottom gating system section 1 is top gating system section 2 is bottom gating system now this riser is section 3 in you know y why i am riser i am taking as a different section 
because the cross section area of riser is a different than casting cross section area of riser is different than casting and that will also be bottom gating system okay na mm -hmm. so this is your next question so let us see how much time will be consumed in a filling section one it will be filled like a top gate so tf1 means twice a h divided by an ag under root 2g ht so twice a means 30 square h means 10 ag means 5 cm square under root 2 into 981 HT is thirty-five. HT is thirty-five. Okay. Is it okay? here oh there is no two here na oh, oh, one more back there is no two here okay <laughs> na so all right you got top gate na so answer will be 6.86 second so this is the time to fill the section 1 time to fill the section 2 it's a bottom gate tf2 is nothing but twice a under root ad under root 2g ht minus or ht minus h correct so now put everything twice Thirty AG five two into nine eighty one HT means thirty five minus thirty five minus twenty. So this is TF two. TF two, you will get it. It is sixteen point six second. Just thirty second break so that you can match the answer. So that you can match the answer. Okay. I told you why these proofs are important. Why these proofs are important. So that is the way to calculate the time. even if there is a very well cross section area uh, even if there is a very well cross section area now here i want to calculate the time to fill the riser 
लेट एस एट दिस इज डी एच एट ए डिस्टेंस एच सो एच विल वेरी फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी फाइव करेक्ट ना बिकॉज द क्रॉस सेक्शन एरिया इज सेम फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी फाइव सो सी वॉट इज माई थिंग ए डी एच ए जी लिमिट ओके ना सो थर्ड सेक्शन टी एफ थ्री विल बी इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी फाइव ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी फाइव ए डी एच ए डी एच and what is the a here what is the a pi by 4 d square that is the area na so adh divided by ag under root 2g ag under root 2g 35 minus h करेक्ट ना ए पाई बाई फोर डी स्क्वेयर बिकॉज वी आर टेकिंग आउट राइजर नाउ ए जी इज सेम फाइव सेंटीमीटर स्क्वायर टू जी इज कॉन्स्टेंट नाउ इंटीग्रेट फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी फाइव यू विल गेट टाइम टू फिल द कास्टिंग ऑफ थर्ड सेक्शन थर्ड सेक्शन टाइम टू फिल द कास्टिंग यू विल गेट इट दैट आंसर कम्स आउट टू बी टेन पॉइंट नाइन एट सेकेंड 10.98 second Ten point nine eight second so how much is the total time to fill the casting tf1 plus tf2 plus tf3 so that is the total time to fill the casting it is 34.4 second that is the reason i told you that whatever i have proved in during the gating system if you understand that if you understand that i am 100% sure that you can hit each and every single problem of gate related to gating system design each and every problem you will be able to hit whatever comes in the gating system design okay so there's a riser design and the gating system it uh, it was very important section for gate now some properties of green sand mold some properties of green sand mold once again these are the one shot crash courses and we are not going to discuss the entire thing whatever we feel important for gate 2023 that's what we are covering one of the very important property is a permeability very important property is the permeability you know what is the permeability suppose there are sand particles suppose there are sand particles and there are voids in the sand particle there are voids in the sand particle so through this voids gases goes out to the atmosphere the ability of the sand mold to allow the gases to go out, go out through this sand voids is called permeability is called permeability and if you draw a curve 
between permeability and water content it's a permeability it's a permeability by increasing the water content permeability increases you know why because this sand will be a heterogeneous mixture sand will be a heterogeneous mixture please hear very carefully so initially what will happen the sand void will be filled with sand voids will be filled with a smaller particle sand a smaller particle sand and when the water content increases these smaller particles will also combine and attach themselves to the bigger particle so the void will increase void increase permeability will also increase okay na now this maximum permeability will permeability will be there let us say up to 8% of water up to 8% of water if you try to add more amount of water permeability will go down you know why permeability will go down because water is start accumulating now water is start accumulating in the sand voids water is start accumulating in the sand void so permeability will go down so permeability directly proportional to the void and if you see strength so you can say strength and permeability <coughs> strength and permeability there is a inverse relationship there is a inverse relationship because by increase in void permeability will increase but increase in void strength will decrease it was a very very important fundamental discussion whatever we had just now now how exactly we calculate how exactly we calculate the permeability number permeability number so we prepare a mold we prepare a mold a is the cross section area and h is the height a is the cross section area and h is the height now between the bottom and the top surface let us say p1 and p2 p is the p1 minus p2 i am creating the p uh, pressure difference and by creating this p pressure difference how much time it takes to pass 2000 cc of air from the bottom to top how much time it takes to pass 2000 cc of air from bottom to top is called permeability number so permeability number is vh over pat see you know it's very difficult to remember formulas so generally everything is standard so just remember 3007 divided by t and the t is the time in minute permeability number is 3007 divided by t t is the time in minute because unnecessary so many dimensions are given it will take you a lot of time to calculate so 3000 because everything h a v everything is a standard p generally p is the 10 grams per centimeter cube so 3007 divided by t t is the time in minute permeability number and between the permeability and the strength between the permeability and the strength there is a inverse relationship there is a inverse relationship
there is a inverse relationship okay now us there is a very important property of sand mold called collapsibility collapsibility is not the term that you are thinking collapsibility is not the term that you are thinking generally what people think that when the mold is falls from a certain height how it breaks collapsibility no that is not collapsibility collapsibility is during the solid shrinkage during the solid shrinkage like third stage of shrinkage during the solid shrinkage mold wall should not offer any resistance because metal will be at uh, stick to the sand wall so when the solid contraction is taking place the metal should not rub with the mold wall this property is called collapsibility because if there is a rubbing because my material is very weak na my material is very weak so during the contraction if there is a drag during the contraction if there is a drag then the cracks will appear on the casted part cracks will appear on the casted part and this property of sand mold is called collapsibility so the uh, the sand mold should be collapsible that crack should not appear in the casted part so you know how exactly we increase the collapsibility how exactly we increase the collapsibility in the sand we add some additives like wood floor or cow dung wood floor or cow dung around 3% so what happens when you are pouring the liquid metal liquid metal will be hot liquid metal will be hot so hot now here what i am saying so hot metal will burn these additives hot metal will burn these additives creating extra space creating extra space for the safe contraction of the metal when the hot metal is poured into the mold cavity this hot metal will burn these additives like wood floor or cow dung creates extra space for the safe contraction of the casted part so wood floor increases the collapsibility of the sand board so collapsibility strength and permeability these are the three most important properties these are the three most important properties of sand mold okay na once again we are discussing only the most important topics we are discussing only the most important topics okay next topic is die casting die casting
in the sand mole after each cast mold is broken but in die casting but in die casting mold is made up of sub permanent material permanent material and generally in industry we use cast iron very rarely we use die steel but primarily it's a cast primarily it's a cast iron primarily it's a cast iron so the same mold can be used again and again then there is something called hot chamber die casting cold chamber die casting in hot chamber die casting furnace is a part of dies so a major portion of a major portion of the die is immersed in the liquid metal aluminum cannot be hot chamber die cast because most of the assembly is immersed in material aluminum reacts with iron that's the reason we don't a uh, hot chambered aluminum but generally cold chamber die casting are meant for very high melting point materials and the hot chamber die casting processes are meant for low melting point materials now the die casting are having some advantages and disadvantages this so i am telling you the characteristics characteristics includes both advantages and disadvantages first is production rate is very high up to 50 cast per hour 50 to 60 cast per hour we can get a production rate is very high single most advantage next is product will be strong you know why the products will be strong why the products will be strong because liquid metal is poured into the die die is a metal so from the liquid metal there will be rapid heat transfer there will be rapid heat transfer and what our ttt diagram tells you what our ttt diagram tells you rapid cooling produces fine grain structure and what dislocation theory tells you fine grain structures are strong anyway material science we have discussed and my dislocation theory lectures are also available in the youtube so you can mix both of them so we got very strong material okay na generally finish would be good generally you know when we when you are using the same mold repeatedly again and again a portion of material will stick to the die surface and if that happens surface finish will be spoiled so exactly what we do after producing few hundred of cast after producing few hundreds of cast we clean it by using abrasive jet machining by cleaning by using abrasive jet machining we have to clean the mold otherwise it will deteriorate the surface finish so here you can see that in the die casting there are some hidden costs there are some hidden costs and a hot chamber a hot chamber furnace 
and die are same and the cold chamber die and furnace are different die and furnace are different okay once again these are short notes and now centrifugal casting centrifugal casting centrifugal casting is of three types true centrifugal semi centrifugal and centrifuging centrifuging true centrifugal cast you know we perform on a lathe let us say the mold is in the two halves we can split it and again can join <coughs> and it has rotated at a very high speed and the liquid metal is poured at the center why the mold is at an angle why the mold is at an angle so that liquid metal covers the entire working length of the mold liquid metal covers the entire working length of the mold centrifugal force is mr omega square so the heavier impurities will settle down at the outer surface as the lighter lighter impurities will collect at the center i'm talking about impurities sometime you know in interview i have seen that examiner is asking the grain grain will be different when the examiner is asking about the size of grain finer and coarser only one one criteria comes into picture the cooling rate if the cooling rates are high grains will be fine cooling rates are slow grains will be coarse and especially in all the die casting processes when the cooling rate will be faster the portion of liquid metal coming in contact with the die that portion of metal will have fine grain because it will be subjected to the faster cooling rate ttt diagram uh, some of you may be seeing this uh, casting uh, lecture without seeing the material science lecture so i do not recommend first of all you see the material science lecture then come to casting because understanding ttt diagram is absolutely required to understand what i am saying now understanding of ttt diagram is absolutely required to understand what i am saying now so two centrifugal castings are used to manufacture ceramic pipes now here i here very carefully what i am saying large pipes pipes made of ceramic and cast iron are produced by true centrifugal casting i am telling you very very important funda for match the following large pipes pipes made of ceramic or cast iron are produced by true centrifugal casting steel pipes are manufactured by resistance welding 
and plastic pipes are produced by extrusion process using a mandrel it can be indirect extrusion process using a mandrel so all the different types of plastic pipes are manufactured by extrusion <coughs> now semi centrifugal castings there is a mold cavity kept in the horizontal plane and we are rotating along the vertical axis we are pouring the liquid metal from the center pouring the liquid metal from the center semi centrifugal casting why it is called semi because this portion will be filled by purely centrifugal action and towards center gravity component will increase gravity component will increase towards center gravity component will increase towards center mold is in the horizontal plane rotated pour the liquid metal from the center semi centrifugal alloy wheels used in motor bikes pulleys fly wheels these sorts of things are produced by semi centrifugal casting okay now the centrifuging is centrifuging is there is a large wheel at the periphery there are multiple molds and these molds are connected to the central sprue with the help of individual gate with the help of individual gate drum is rotated in the horizontal plane liquid metal is poured through the center so these castings will be filled under pressure castings will be filled under pressure and after solidification is over we cut everything and get these products mm. percentage yield in semi in centrifuging is only 5 to 10% <laughs> so it's not a very productive casting process but still in some cases we use it like primarily this type of casting is used to make patterns for investment casting pattern for investment casting okay pattern for investment casting okay so centrifugal casting now there is there are two very very important casting processes first is shell molding as far as accuracy is concerned uh, these two castings comes at number 1 shell molding and investment casting okay so what is the shell molding process so what is the shell molding process this is the pattern made up of material like cast iron pattern made up of cast iron this pattern will have ejector pins ejector 
ejector pins like this. Ejector pins. Okay. Because if you press it, this portion will come out on this side. This arrangement is to remove the shell. So, what do you do? You take a container, container. In this container, there is a sand plus phenolic resin and alcohol. We don't use any water. This alcohol is having lot of applications in industry. Same, chick, that same alcohol, C2H5OH. But for industry use, C2H5OH and CH3OH both are same. So the alcohol that we are using in industry, it will be a mixture of CH3OH and C2H5OH. But it is it smells like the normal alcohol. So when the workers, you know, they are working now, they say, so, ah, the smell is coming. So they steal and drink that alcohol. And they die. In India, you see this news, this news all the time that so many people died due to <coughs> drinking of contagious alcohol. That alcohol is meant for industry, not for consumption. So somewhere, some somebody might have might have leaked it, and people are drinking that. So now understood. Alcohol is have a lot of application in, in industry. This is one of the applications. So we use alcohol. We don't use water. We use only alcohol. Now the pattern is clamped over it. Pattern is clamped over a box. Initially, you heat the pattern approximately 280 degrees centigrade, you heat the pattern approximately 280 degrees centigrade, clamp it, then revert the box, invert it. So sand will fall over the hot pattern, sand will fall over the hot pattern. Keep it in the inverted condition for some time, this is called lead time. So as a result of that, what will happen? some thickness of some thickness of shell will appear over the pattern some thickness of shell will appear over the pattern correct now you unclamp it put it in an oven this entire assembly put it in, in an oven so in oven, what will happen? Whatever alcohol is there, that alcohol will burn. And you will get a very hard shell. You will get a very hard shell. So now what do you do? You press the ejector pins, because ejector pins are here. You press the ejector pins so that the shell will come out. So the shell will come out. Now two or three cells are combined together. How we combine? Either we clamp it or we use some thermosetting plastic. or we use some thermosetting plastic to join or we use thermosetting plastic to join okay na 
Now the liquid metal is poured. And after solidification, break the shell to get the product out of it. So that is a shell molding. Remember, shell molding is one of the most accurate process of casting the product. One of the most accurate process of casting the product. Shell molding. Now there is one more very accurate process of casting the material called investment casting. Investment casting. Now I hope everybody is hearing. I hope everybody is hearing. The process is so accurate that it is produced to gas turbine blades. It is used to produce gas turbine blades. Steam turbine blades are produced by electrochemical machining. Gas turbine blades are produced by investment casting. And the large size water turbine blades are produced by on a copying lathe using CLON as a tool material. Using CLON as a tool material. So, uh, in investment casting, either we use wax or molten sulfur. And when either use wax or molten sulfur to make the pattern. <coughs> if we are using wax, the process is called lost wax method. So these patterns are produced by investment, uh, pr produced by centrifuging. We discussed 10 minutes before. Initially, we make the pattern using the centrifuging. Let us say wax. Huh? Now the different patterns are combined in the form of a tree. Different patterns are combined together in the form of a tree. <laughs> now, because it is the process is done manually and it's a wax. So there will be a lot of dirt on the wax. Remember, it is one of the most accurate process. After investment, you do not require any machining operation. So we want everything clean. So now how to uh, clean this pattern tree? It is called pattern tree. This pattern tree dip into alcohol again alcohol <laughs> daru in hindi put in the alcohol take it out again put it take it out by two three procedures wax will become crystal white you can do this experiment i think some of you may have liquor at home put liquor and put little wax into it after some time, remove wax. It will be crystal clear. Try. Huh? Try. Because some of you may be family man. You may have liquor at home. I don't know. So now my pattern tree is ready. Now what I do, this pattern tree is dipped into slurry. Slurry contains sand, some additives, and water. Here we use water. Previously we used alcohol in making shell, but here we use water. So what we do? This pattern tree drip into slurry, take it out. 
dry it in dry air hot dry air the temperature of air should not be too high otherwise wax will melt out again dip it take it out dry again dip it take it out dry so by repeating this procedure by repeating this procedure certain thickness of shell certain thickness of shell will appear over the pattern tree certain thickness of shell will appear over the pattern tree now you hit the shell wax will go out wax will go out now this uh, shell you fire at 1150 degree centigrade you fire at 1150 degree centigrade so by firing at 11 degrees 1150 degree centigrade two things will happen number one whatever remaining wax will burn remaining wax will burn second thing is that when you are firing at a certain such a high, such, such a high temperature sands will combine and sand will produce a stronger bond <coughs> one of the very very popular indian author book and some of the people recommend that book you know what they write pattern is there wax you pour the liquid metal because of wax density is low so it will go away Array, that is not the way we uh, investment casting is done if you do that there will be a lot of contamination in the final product it's a very popular book i don't want to tell online and everybody is recommending or every tom dick and harry recommending that book and there are hundreds of mistakes that's the reason i am i am not suggesting that book okay na? and unfortunately all the private colleges that uh, even, even the coaching teachers they follow that book that's the reason when the student face the exam they have difficulty so now after firing at 1150 degree centigrade shell is strong shell is strong now pour the liquid metal now hear this sentence very carefully pour the liquid metal when the shell is hot You know why? Because there was water. So these additives are having a tendency, additives are having a tendency to catch moisture from the surrounding. So if you wait till room temperature, whatever moisture is there in the surrounding will be absorbed by the mold. And when the liquid metal is poured, there will be blow holes. So, we pour the liquid metal when the shell is still hot and after solidification, break the shell and get the product. And this is the most accurate method of casting. So, when it comes to accuracy, na, when it comes to accuracy, you say, investment casting then shell molding then die casting then other things will go away so in the in this one shot course of casting casting is relatively a small topic so what i have discussed theory derivation and some nu uh, numericals for whatever i felt important for gate 2023 so with this i will be recording one shot series for industrial engineering also but if you happens to join only this course, I mean casting, I wish you all the best for your next gate examination and be in contact with us, whether success or failure, we will always be with you. Thank you very much.